leech and throwing off of that. Well, you Buckeye fans recall uh, what the, the Buckeyes did to uh, Minnesota. Iowa had its best offensive performance of the year against Minnesota. They had 401 yards total offense against the Gopher defense. And uh, the Gophers even failed to cross their own 40-yard line in the first half and didn't penetrate the 50 until the final play of the third quarter. And the Hawkeyes, uh, with a little different kind of ball control at that time, controlled the ball 83 plays to Minnesota's 52. So if uh, paperwork has anything to do with it, we should we should be in for a fairly uh, fairly interesting ball game this afternoon. Taking a look, Bob, at a couple of stats while the both teams huddle, uh, Rod Gerald is 19 out of 34 this season. And he's had one touchdown pass, his longest gain, 45 yards, throwing the football. Ron Springs has carried more than anybody, 93 times, an average of five and a half. Tom McLaughlin uh, for Iowa, 21 of 42, throwing the football, two for touchdowns. He has been intercepted three times. So we'll be ready very shortly now for the kickoff. And the Buckeyes will be kicking from left to right as we look down on the field. And that means that Tom Orris is in there to do the kicking. He's from Fairport Harbor. And to his left will be Tom Blinko, Alvin Washington, Mike Guest, Todd Bell, Duncan Griffin, Jim Laughlin, and Jim Schwartz. And on the opposite side of him will be Terry Vogler, Terry Bach, and Joe Hornick. He's ready at the near hash mark to kick it off. And three men are back there in the deep position for Iowa. The match of Iowa on homecoming day. And Orris comes up on the ball and boots it. It is going down to the five. It is caught there. And running with it is Reed. He's back to the 10, to the right, to the 15, over the 20, out to the 26-yard line, taken at the 26 by Jim Laughlin. And he got some help from Tom Blinko. So it goes to Iowa on the 26-yard line of the Hawkeyes. It is first down and 10 yards to go. And they do have at quarterback Tom McLaughlin. Bob Cummings, Jr., the son of the coach, is the senior. And they're counting on him. They go to the double wing. They have uh, Cook in motion. Back to pass after a fake is McLaughlin. He starts running right, being chased by Ross. He runs with the ball. He's up to the 30, to the 35, to the 40. The 41-yard line by Joe Allegro. He faked to uh, Cook, who is in motion to the left. He ran it back to the right side. He went 15 yards with the ball out to the 41-yard line. And right away, the 57,000 fans here love it. First down and 10 to go for the only setback in behind. It is Cook in motion. Cook gets the ball, starts to go left, and cuts back to the inside and is taken down by Paul Ross. And he was taken at the line of scrimmage. And it will be second down and 10 at the 41. A full house tee, but they shift again into the double wing. They split the left end. And they have Cook in motion. And driving this time over the right side is the tailback, Rod Morton. And he goes off right tackle, slicing four yards out to the 45-yard line. And Tom Cousinow is there to make the tackle for the Buckeyes on the play. Cousinow has a uh, double wing formation. Lazar sets in behind McLaughlin. He's into his count. He has Cook in motion to the left. And he is going back. And on the draw play, hands off. Lazar bangs up the middle. Crosses midfield. Goes to the 45-yard line of Ohio State. Allegro and Cousinow make the tackle. But he picked up 10. He needed six for the first down. And the Hawkeyes have their second first down on this drive. They started back in their own 26-yard line, and they are moving the football. Brad, again, they're ready to go. They're really excited. And again, it's a man in motion to the left, and it is pitched out, and it is Jesse Cook swinging left, and he's not going to get very much because Mike Guess is there to spill him for a loss with a fine shoestring tackle. Guess, who has been getting a lot of ink in Columbus, throws the man uh, Cook. But he likes to stick him, and he did it just now. Second down, 13, 48-yard line of the Buckeyes. And uh, Morton is in motion. He gets the ball, knifes over right tackle, picks up three yards to the 45, and Tom Cousinaw is there to take him down, and it'll be third down and 10 yards to go for Iowa. A couple of scores coming in. Michigan leading Wisconsin. After the famed Iowa All-American, third and 10, 45-yard line of Ohio State. Again, it is Jesse Cook in motion, and McLaughlin goes back to throw. He fires it on the left side, in and out of the hands of 
Brad Reed at the 32-yard line. He threw it well. Reed just couldn't deal with it. And covering on the play, Dave Atkins, Lenny Mills, and Ray Griffin. So it will be fourth down 10 at the 45-yard line of Ohio State. And the punter is Dave Holesclaw. He does their... Uh, 6.8. His longest has been 48. He is kicking from his 45 into the wind. And he boots it downfield. It bounces on the 22-yard line, goes inside it, and is going to be dead at about the 13. The score nothing, nothing. We pause 30 seconds. The Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. Ohio State at their 14, first and 10. Jeff Logan, left tackle, nothing. He carried the ball on the handoff from Rod Jarrell and was stacked at the line of scrimmage. John Hardy and Joe Hufford with Steve Vasquez in on the play. It'll be second down and ten. Andrea and Fritz to guards and Mark Lang at center. Eye formation. And once again, Logan bangs straight in and gets a couple of yards. Seemed to lose the ball, but hangs onto it at the 18-yard line. So Jeff picked up four tough yards that time. Logan uh, going into the game has, uh, of course, not carried the ball a great deal because he's been hurt. He's averaging four points in there for Vasquez. The linebackers are up into the gap. Here is Harold in motion. And it goes to Springs. Over right tackle to the 20. Bounces off the man. He's hit at the 21-yard line. He will not make the first down. Springs is tackled by Levin White, the sophomore from Detroit. So the Buckeyes do not get the first down. And they're standing here at Kinnick Stadium. 54, Reed and Becker are back deep as he stands at his 10 with the wind at his back. It is a wobbly kick and it is going out of bounds. Up around midfield, we'll see where they spot it. It's nothing, nothing as we pause 30 seconds. Iowa at their own 48-yard line, first and 10. Jesse Cook in motion. And he brings it over left tackle. And it's hit from uh, the 48 into the 45, a pickup of three yards, and Dave Atkins from Xenia. Takes him down at the 45-yard line of Ohio State. That was a 31-yard kick by Dave McKee with a wind at his back. It is second down, seven to go at the Ohio State 45-yard line as Iowa breaks the huddle. They have Brad Reed, who has caught four passes, going out wide to the right, double wing. The halfbacks are split outside of the ends. And Lazar is the only man back. It is Morton taking the ball and moving over right tackle and getting one yard to the 44-yard line. And he is wrapped up by Paul Ross at the 44. And that will make it third down and six yards to go for Iowa. The halfback sometimes in motion. It is third down, six yards to go. Here's Cook in motion to his left. And McLaughlin goes back to throw. And he's being rushed. He's out of the pocket. He's running with the ball. He's hit at the 44-yard line by Byron Cato, the big junior from Lorain, Ohio. At the line of scrimmage, the 44. Give him a half a yard into the 43 and make it fourth down five. So Iowa cannot do it. And uh, they'll have to kick it again. Well, it would appear the Buckeye defense has got their, month, they got their number now. We give them a couple of different looks and... And so we've got the book on the thing. Holesclaw with a short, wobbly end-over-end kick that is going out of bounds. That's a very short kick. And so Ohio State will get the football. Let's see where they mark it as they bring it in at the 32-yard line. So that would be a nine-yard kick, according to my figures. The 32-yard line behind him and springs in back of Logan. And it is given to Springs, tries left tackle. Fine second effort, gets him out to the 35-yard line. He was hit at the line of scrimmage. Didn't have anything and found a couple of yards himself and is taken down on the play by Shanty Burke, who is the strong side safety man. At the 35, it will be second and seven. Of course, Ron Springs having an outstanding year. He's the leading rusher with uh, 500 years, 66 or last week, 66 yards against Purdue. Campbell replaces Logan in the backfield. It again goes to Springs, and again he's in between left guard and left tackle, and he squirms out to the 39-yard line on a pickup of four yards. And uh, he is taken down at the 39 by the middle linebacker Tom Rutt from Dubuque, Iowa. So let's see now. Third down coming up for the Buckeyes. They need three for the first down. Six minutes and 39 seconds left in this first quarter. In a in the middle of it, Joel Payton, the freshman from Metter, Ohio. Gerald has it. He gives it to Payton, and he slams over the left side of the line and is taking it out to the 45-yard line. And that will be enough for a first down for Ohio State. 
Peyton, nothing fancy. You knew it was coming. And he just takes it out to the 45. And there it is first down and 10 to go for the Buckeyes. Of course, as far as Coach Hayes says, Joel Peyton is his best back out of the robust, out of the uh, Springs I formation. Herman Jones out wide to the left. Gerald optioning right. And he hands it off to Logan. And he slices in off uh, right tackle. Doesn't get much running room, but picks up a couple of yards, two and a half yards, and Weiss is there, the right linebacker, to take him down at the 48-yard line. It will be second down and seven to go. 5.49 left, first quarter, no score. As Jones goes to the sideline, Harrell is in. More from Ravenna, Paul Campbell. There's that 4-3 look, but now they've got about six men up front against the Buckeyes. Gerald hands it off, springs over left tackle to midfield and hit hard and pushed backward at the 50-yard line. And it is Tom Rust, the middle linebacker, who is there once more to make the tackle at the 50. And it will be third down, and we will have seen that standard 4-3, so Joey gets things sorted out over there, maybe. It is a, an option play, and it is strings around the left end wide, and he sweeps it into the 43-yard line for a first down. Nice play by Rod Gerald, angling along the line of scrimmage going left, and he pitches back, and it is Ron Springs to the 43-yard line with John Harty, a freshman. Again, the eye formation, and it springs over right tackle and up the middle, cutting back to the left, inside the 35, into the 32, down to the 31-yard line. Fine running by Ron Springs over right tackle, cutting back to the left, and he runs for 12 yards and another first down. In at the... So here they are again, first and 10, 31-yard line. Gerald optioning right, he flips it back, and his spring swinging around the end of the 25, and inside it gets into about the 23-yard line, and Cedric Shaw from Newark, New Jersey, knocks him out of bounds as he was sweeping around the right side. In at the 23, it'll be second down, and a couple of yards to go. With four minutes left to play in the first quarter of a scoreless game, Ohio State on a drive that started back. It is nine plays old. Here they come again, and Paul Campbell goes up the middle, finds an opening, goes inside the 15-yard line, onto the 14-yard line, and Levin Weiss is there to take him at the 14. It'll be first down and 10 for Ohio State. So the Buckeyes here moving the Peyton in the middle of it. The ball to Peyton, and he is taken at the line of scrimmage. He actually seemed to slip and fall as he was getting the ball. And that was the case. It'll be second down and 10. Incidentally, the record for most yards in a game rushing for Ohio State, 240-yard line of the Hawkeyes. We're not getting that 4-3. It's more like a seven-man front. Gerald options right. Logan around the right end and out of bounds in at the 10. Jeff Logan out of bounds, pushed out there by Weiss again, the right linebacker, at the 10-yard line. So he picks up four yards, and that will make it third down and six. The success of that option is... Uh, so far this year has been amazing only because Rod Gerald now is a uh, little guys come out into the full house see Peyton, Logan and Harrell in behind the quarterback and it is handed off to Jimmy Harrell this time and he drives it inside to the eighth there's a big pile up there did he lose the ball? He seems to hold it he did at about the nine yard line he's got the football but it's going to be fourth down and about four he's missed have been for over 50 yards He's been very tough inside, and he boots this one up and through, and the Buckeyes take the lead, 3-0, as we pause 30 seconds. Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. Tom Morris ready to kick off for Ohio State as the drive went 68 yards in 10, 11, 12, 13 plays, and it is 3-0 Ohio State. We had expected to see a conservative ball game by Coach Hayes, uh, who had had a number of tips from, from the coach last week that they would probably just robust their way up one end and down the other. Uh, but to be honest with you, I didn't expect to see him go this far into the first quarter, at least in that drive without throwing one pass, particularly when he had the wind at his back. 
Yeah, they had not thrown once. That's right, and they have been explosive the last two weeks in the first quarter, and they were explosive last year here in the first period. Now Tom Morris again ready to kick off, and Vogler, Bach, and Hornick are to his right. Blinko, Washington, Guess, Bell, Duncan, Griffin, Laughlin, and Schwartz are to his left. He's got the wind at his back as he gets ready to kick it. And Cook, Reed, and Frazier are the deep men for Iowa. Here's the kick into the air and going down deep into the end zone, and Jesse Cook will not run it out. It will come out to the 20-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for the Hawkeyes. I would have to say for the Buckeye fans who are with us this afternoon, if you recall the wind in the Oklahoma game uh, and how big a factor that was, the wind this afternoon is just about just about as big a factor in the game. It's just about as strong, except it would be coming from the opposite direction. Yonikievsky. And now McLaughlin handing off, and the fullback coming up the middle is John Lazar, and he gets from the 20-yard line out to the 23 and is taken down by Paul Ross, Gary Doolin, and Dave Atkins at the 23-yard line of Iowa. Formation. Now they go to a full house, but they shift again into the double wing with both halfbacks setting outside the ends. Cook in motion to the left. McLaughlin takes the cook, runs right, is up to the 25-yard line, spins the tackler and gets to the 27. Kelton Dantzler is there to make him, uh, the tackle on the play. Dantzler has been splendid in that tackling department for the Buckeyes. The ball spotted at the 28-yard line, third and two. That's the second time they've uh, shown us that look, and it's hard to tell whether it's... Uh... ...to go, a minute, 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Ohio State leads 3 nothing. McLaughlin in a long count. He has Cook in motion again. Cook gets the ball, cuts up the middle, gets to the 29. That won't be enough. As Aaron Brown from Warren, the senior, is in there from his middle guard spot to make the tackle. They'll have to kick it now. It's fourth down and about the yard and a half to go for the first down. And Guess back deep, looking into the sun. And he is kicking into the wind. Holesclaw gets some time and hangs one high. Way up there, and it is Griffin fair catching at his 35-yard line. Ray was uh, not only getting his hand up there, it seemed to me, Bob, to uh, announce a fair catch, but also to uh, see the ball. A little trouble with that sunshine. That sun is very, very, very brilliant, and of course, Ray having to look right into it. He's got a wind at his back, so he's not sure whether he's going to have to... The Hawkeyes coming at him, so he's got his mind full. 36-yard kick, and here comes Logan up the middle, across the 40, 45-50, into Iowa territory to the 47-yard line. A quick hitter by Jeff Logan, and he almost was able to bust it loose as he goes over to the 47-yard line of Iowa. Roger Stetch, the quarter cornerback, making the tackle. A 17-yard gain. First down, 10, the 47-yard line of Iowa. And there's the end of the first quarter. 3-0 Ohio State. This is the Ohio State Football Network. This quarter has been brought to you by the Stroll Brewery Company. Family brewers for more than 200 years. Are they only making Detroit City? They started making beer there long ago. And it's still around today. Brew the same great way. Stroll's beer from the family Stroll. From the old world to the new, great taste comes through to you. Strode's beer from the family Strode. Hi folks, this is the old stuttering ball mail. We get it for Strode's beer. And from one beer lover to another, go out and buy yourself a cold six-pack of pleasure. Strode's beer from the family Strode. From the old world to the new, great taste comes through to you. From the family stroll. Guys have possession of the ball. We lead it three to nothing. It was more play-by-play. -play. Ken Coleman. Okay, Bob Connors. They had it for 19 plays in the first quarter. Iowa had it for 16. Here is Gerald faking to Logan and cutting over left tackle and being uh, spun down at the 45-yard line uh, after a gain of two. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. Win an autographed copy of Woody Hayes' book you win with people on the Bob Connor Show Monday. Listen for the Buckeye replay of the day, weekday afternoons on WTVN 610 Radio Columbus. The 45-yard line of Iowa. It is second down and eight to go for the Buckeyes. Gerald back to throw. Guns one, and it is low intended for Jimmy Harrell. Angling in from the right side. Double coverage on him back there by Cedric Shaw and Shanty Burks. 
So it's going to be third down eight at the 45. And that one was uh, a little bit deflected by one of the linemen up front as uh, Rod was trying to fire it out there. Again the eye, again a back to throw. And he punches one up the middle and it is caught. And down at the 30-yard line is Bill Jaco. At the 31, that's where they're going to spot the ball. Dean Moore and Tom Rusk making the tackle on the play. And that's going to be first down and 10. So now, going into the crosswind in this quarter, they are throwing the ball. That's a 14-yard pickup. Well, we were talking about the lack of set up some passing, uh, some passing situations. They've been in the line all afternoon. First and 10, 31-yard line. Gerald over left tackle, keeping the ball and still running with it inside the 20. And on to the 15-yard line. A great effort by Rod Gerald on the option after taking. He went over the left side. He got hit at the 25 and again about the 20. Took some people with him. Goes to the 15. First down on a 16-yard run. Weiss and Steck are there to make the tackle. And that's a 16-yard run to the 15-yard line. First down to the two. They were grabbing him by the arm. Gerald handing off to Jeff Logan. Bangs over right tackle and gets about a yard from the 15-yard line to the 14, and it'll be second down and nine yards to go. And Tom Rusk, the middle linebacker, again there to make the tackle. Speaking of John Borton was the quarterback. Here's Ron Springs over right tackle inside the 10 and surging along to the eight-yard line, and Springs really going hard. Weiss again, the right linebacker there on the stop for Iowa at the eight. So it's going to be a third and two situation for Ohio State. They lead 3-0 here. This crowd, this big crowd roaring now. Third down two. There's Peyton over left tackle and slams in there to the one-yard line. Joel Peyton goes to the one, and it will be first down and goal to go for Ohio State. Well, you know what they're going to do. Shanty Burks is the man who made the tackle, the strong safety. They know what they're about to... Uh, throw at them and they just can't stop them. Peyton has been tremendous. Formation again. Gerald crouching in back of Mark Lang. Gets the ball and Peyton is going to be dumped at the line of scrimmage. It will be second down and goal to go at the one yard line. Ohio State leading three to nothing on a 26 yard first period field goal by Vlada Yonikievsky. Well, Iowa had better, uh, their defensive unit had better be deep because the Buckeyes have used quite a few plays in the drive of the first period. Rod Gerald is ready, gets the ball, hands it off, and Peyton is going to be hit again. Trying to go over left tackle, and there was nothing there, and they stopped him again. It'll be third down and goal, and this crowd is roaring now on homecoming day in Iowa. Peyton was hit hard. Rusk and Moore, the linebackers, filling up the gaps and uh, pouring through that time to make the play. crowd makes even more noise. And here at the Kinnick Stadium, Volley is the third back there in the robust tee, but Peyton's the man in the middle. Rod Gerald gets the ball, and he hands it off, and driving up the middle, and into a pile is Peyton. No signal. No signal yet. Gerald is indicating touchdown. The officials are not. They didn't get it. They need about an inch. They are inches away from again the full house D about a 10-man front up there against them and again the officials are asking for quiet because Rod Gerald cannot make the call and the Buckeyes go back and huddle once more and you can be sure the noise will pick up again don't get much Rod Gerald ready here's the snap he hands it off to Peyton I don't think he got it he did not at the one yard Four times. A tremendous goal line stand by the Hawkeyes of Iowa from their one yard line on the drive that started on the Ohio State 35 yard line. And they kept on eating off big chunks of yardage coming down the field. But when they got to the one, they could. First and ten. McLaughlin, the quarterback, and they shift around now into their double wing. And it is McLaughlin keeping the ball and diving in behind center and right guard, just trying to get a little bit of room and coming up a couple of yards from the one to the three. Dave Atkins takes him down. 
This quarter being brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Check the white and set in behind. And Morton and Cook are the uh, halfbacks, and both of them now spread out. Brady splits left, and Morton goes in motion. McLaughlin dumps a pass as he spot at the 10, and run out to the 17 by the tight end, Jim Swift. He just dumped it over there to the 17-yard line, and Joe Allegro and Ray Griffin make the tackle on a 14-yard gain to the 17. A fine play by McLaughlin. Ten. Cook in motion to his left, and Cook gets the ball flagged down as he is hit at the 15-yard line by Paul Ross for a loss of one. But let's see what the penalty is going to be. As there was a marker down. It is against Iowa. And it looks like a legal procedure on the Hawkeyes. And it will go from the 16 back to the... Again, the double wing formation. First down, 15. McLaughlin, the quarterback, is ready. He has Morton in motion. And a broken play... And uh, he managed to hold on to the ball. McLaughlin did, the quarterback. And there will be a loss on the play back to the nine-yard line. There was trouble. Reed comes out wide right. Again, the double wing. Again, McLaughlin ready. And now Cook in motion to the left. McLaughlin takes the Cook, runs right to throw, and fires it upfield. And it is incomplete and very nearly intercepted by Lenny Mills up around the 30-yard line, intended for Jim Swift. And it'll be third down and 17 yards to go for Iowa. The Buckeyes have been awfully tough defensively this year. Last week, Tom McLaughlin, the six foot one inch, 197 pound quarterback from Dubuque, ready? He has Cook in motion again to the left, and it is Morton on a pitch out. It's going to be spilled for a loss back at the six. Fumbled the ball, but the whistle had uh, blown. He faked the Cook and then lateral to Morton and kind of an old-fashioned double reverse. And uh, Kelton Dantzler was right on top of him and took him at the five-yard line. And that will make it you can get in that end zone. Griffin is standing at the Iowa 45 with the wind at his back. He just barely gets it off. It was almost blocked. And it is bouncing across midfield. And they are yelling because they think there should be uh, interference on the kicker. It rolls dead at the 37-yard line of Ohio State. It is 3-0 Buckeyes. Action will continue after this from this side. First down and 10. High formation. Ricky Johnson is in the backfield now. Rod Gerald handing off and running up the middle is Jeff Logan. And he gets uh, from the 37, 3 yards to the 40-yard line. And Weiss makes the tackle. I would assume the party's over for Wisconsin. Halftime, Michigan 21, Wisconsin nothing. At their own 40-yard line. Again, the I formation. Rod Gerald goes back to throw. Fires long down the middle. And it is incomplete. Almost intercepted at the Iowa 30-yard line. It was for Greg Stora and almost picked off by Dave Becker. He was back there with him as Gerald put it up there a long way, down around the 30-yard line of Iowa. Just a stiff, stiff win. And we have only thrown with the wind against us. Now Gerald is back to throw. He punches one quickly up the middle. It is taken by Paul Campbell, and he spins forward to the 49-yard line of Ohio State, and that's enough for a first down. He was tackled by Tom Rusk as he, uh, Gerald just Gerald. Jones is out wide to the left. And it is Logan over right tackle, swings to the outside, gets to the Iowa 45-yard line where Weiss is there to make the tackle. And that will be uh, a good uh, six-yard pickup. And it will be second down and four. Logan has carried eight times for 40 yards. Harrell is out wide to the left in the eye. Gerald keeping the ball on the option into the 40, to the 35, to the outside, to the 30, to the 25, the 20, the 10, the 5, and a touchdown for Rod Gerald. A 45-yard touchdown run by Rod Gerald over left tackle, goes to the outside, and outruns everybody for the score. And Ohio State is out in front, 9 to nothing. Brilliant run by Rod Gerald. Rod's longest of the year has been 36 yards, so you put that 40... Here's the try. He's 20 of 20, and make it 21. That is good. It is 10-0 Buckeyes. Action will continue after this from Capital Financial Services. Capital. And uh, Jimmy Frazier. For us, kicking into the wind. 5.24 left to play in the first half. 10-0 Ohio State. A very short kick. 
coming up and it is grabbed on the 17 yard line by Jesse Cook to the 20, 25, 30, over the 30 and into a pile at the 32 yard line. And the tackler, Mike Guest. Make it the 31, first and 10 for Iowa. While the teams are uh, changing uh, positions down there in the field, let's uh, go on down and see if we can have Dave Purdy come in. Dave, uh, 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 to the playing surface and there's a lot of noise down here. We'll try and get him again. Okay, here's McLaughlin back to throw. Throws on the right side, intended for Lazar, but he was out of bounds. It goes incomplete. He had Lazar coming out of the backfield, and Dantzler and Atkins were on the coverage on the play. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go at the 31-yard line of Iowa. McLaughlin, 42 attempts, 21 for 14 today. Again, the double wing with the halfbacks outside the ends. And the split end is on the left side. And it is Morton taking the ball, coming around on the right. And Morton is going to be uh, taken at the line of scrimmage by Tom Cousinaw. Morton is a tough runner who's averaged five and a half yards a carry this year. And yet uh, they've shut him down today. Third down 10, 31 yard line of Iowa. And McLaughlin goes straight back to throw. And fires it up the middle. It is intercepted at the 45 yard line of the Buckeyes. And back to the 40-yard line is Joe Allegro. It bounced off the hands of another Ohio State defender, Tom Cousinaw, I believe, and then into the hands of Allegro, and that is interception number 14 for Ohio State this year. It was intended for Jesse Cook and Logan and Johnson, uh, the setbacks. And here comes Logan over that tackle and almost busting it open as he goes to the 35-yard line. He got five, and for a moment before Tom Russ got him, it looked like one of those quick hitters on which Logan can be very dangerous. This quarter being brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Check the white pages of your phone book for the office nearest you. Now Logan and Harold go on the Iowa 35-yard line. Rod Gerald, the quarterback, going back to throw. Over on the right, it is caught by Herman Jones, juggling it as he goes out of bounds at the 28. And that's good for a pickup of uh, seven and a first down. Good play by Gerald to Jones. I do believe that's the first time we've used that outcut like that, uh, Ken. I, I know they have. I know they have, and they practice it all the time. But it's the, if my memory serves me correctly, the first time they've used it, just a basic down and out on the right side. And at the 28-yard line of Iowa. Rod Gerald has it. He starts optioning left. He's got the ball, and he is going to be hit at the line of scrimmage, and he falls forward for about a yard, maybe two, into the 26-yard line. And Joe Hufford, one of the tackles, and the middle linebacker, Tom Rusk, make the tackle. It's at the 26. The gain is two. It'll be second down, eight yards to go for Ohio State. Three and a half minutes left to play here in the first half of this game. Beautiful afternoon. It's eight at the 26-yard line. And Gerald starts going to his left, hands it off, and Campbell gets to the 30-yard line and runs into a whole pile of tacklers there. They were all over him. John Hardy, Joe Hufford, Steve Wagner. And at the 30-yard line, he is, or excuse me, the 25-yard line, he is taken down. So he actually did get one. It'll be third down, seven. Bad receivers in as Harrell is a slot back right. Jones is split right. And Gerald goes back to throw. He looks right, throws left, yes. and it is incomplete for Jaco down around the goal line. So he had him moving on the other side and then uh, came back across to Jaco, but Dave Becker, the free safety, was out on the coverage and it's here prior to today, and he boots this one into a tough wind, and it won't make it. The score, 10-0 Ohio State. Action will continue after this from Capital Financial Services. Check the white pages for an office near you. Iowa's ball at their 20, first and 10 on that short kick by Yonikievsky. And now back goes McLaughlin after a fake, and he throws incomplete at the 45-yard line. A great try by the tight end Jim Swift, but just out of his uh, fingertips as Atkins and Cousinoff were back on the coverage. Boy, those linebackers really peel off of the Buckeyes on some of these plays. They were back up at the fourth out on the right. And they have Cook in motion, and the fakes to Cook, and McLaughlin throws a pass, and it is hit by a lineman. Byron Cato reaches up and knocks it down. Third down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Eldon Miller might say goaltending. Third and 10 for Iowa. Two minutes. 
McLaughlin, one of six for 14 yards. This time he hands it off to Lazar, and the fullback comes up the middle, and from the 20, gets out to the 23-yard line, and Mark Sullivan is there with Byron Cato on the tackle. I'm sure listening back at home, Eddie Beeman today, who's been a fine football player for the Buckeyes, and I'm sure we'll be anxious to get back into action next week. Well, he gets a lot of pub and so on, but he never hears it, so today he's probably hearing all he's got. Here's the kick now by Holslaw, and he really booms this one to the 33. Griffin gets it up to the 40, up to the 43-yard line, and Ray is down at the 43 of the Buckeyes as Holslaw get off a fine kick. Brooks making the tackle. This quarter being brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Check the white pages of your phone book for the office nearest you. That was a 43-yard kick, so Holslaw... And two wide receivers are in there, including Doug Donnelly. Back goes the quarterback, Gerald. He's looking to throw. He's going to run it. He's up to the 45, 50, 45, 40. And smartly, he himself steps out of bounds, seeing that he was cut off from any uh, further progress, down around the 40-yard line, and he stops the clock on the play along with it. Roger Steck making the tackle, the cornerback, or at least uh, guarding him as he went out of bounds. At the 30, again, the eye formation. Gerald is ready. What a threat he's been today. He goes back to throw, jumps a quick one to Paul Campbell at the 35. He's into the 30. He gets on to the 29. Ruskin Weiss makes a tackle as we pause 10 seconds for station identification. You could win this. Ohio State calls timeout. The score, 10-0 Ohio State. And action will continue after this from Capital Financial Services. At Capital, we help people who are short of cash. Uh, Notre Dame and Army, no score. Herman Jones wide left. Gerald handing off and uh, getting a yard, which should be enough for the first down, is Paul Campbell to the 28-yard line. The tacklers on the play, John Hardy and Steve Wagner. The defensive left hand and left tackle. Wagner, Jr., Hardy, a freshman. Backfield. Volley is in there. And uh, here comes Peyton over the left side, and he's got it into the 23-yard line. From the 28, Ohio State whacks out another first down at the 23, first and 10 for the Buckeyes. Joel Payton is tackled by Tom Rusk, and the clock starts moving. Now they have Donnelly and Jones both out wide to the right. Doug Slot back out there. Gerald back to throw. Looking left. Getting at the 10-yard line. And spinning forward to the 5 is Charles Hunter from uh, Newark, Delaware, a sophomore. He caught the ball on the left. Again, they had the two men wide right. Becker made the tackle. That was where they almost hit Jaco a while ago. That's an 18-yard gain. The ball is at the five, and it is first down and goal to go for Ohio State. We have 28 seconds short tight ends in, but they're in the eye formation, and Rod Gerald is running right, looking, looking. He may run it. He is going to be hit. He's running back to his left and still the loss at the 11. Roger Steck, the cornerback, got him. And time is called with eight seconds left. This quarter has been brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Call your nearest Capital Financial Services office to find out more about getting your loan. The crosswind. Here's the snap. Harold puts it down. Yonikievsky boots it up. And it is good. It is 13 to nothing, Ohio State. And action will continue after this from Capital Financial Services. Fortunately, on the sideline, when it got out on the field, he kicked a 28-yarder. So Vladi continues to kick the ball well in his range. Uh, he's tried it several outside of 50 and has not made those. Now, Oris onside kicking it, and it bounces down at the 36-yard line of Iowa and is fallen on by one of the uh, Iowa players at that spot. Sam Palladino is the man underneath there with the ball. And so it will go over to the Hawkeyes. First down and 10 yards to go at the 30. Tom McLaughlin, the quarterback, goes back to throw and hits on the left side. It is caught and then lateraled off. And the uh, man is tackled. It was out to Reed. And then he lateraled it to Morton. And Morton was hit and thrown for uh, up at around the 45-yard line. So they made an effort on the pass and then the lateral off of it. But that is all there is in the first half of this game. The score, Ohio State 13 and Iowa nothing. Cook and Jimmy Frazier are the deep men. And uh, Tom Morris gets ready to do the kicking off here in the third quarter of this game. And we're underway at Iowa City. 
Here's the kick, and this one is going down, and Cook takes it about two yards back in, juggles it, and then downs it in the end zone. So Iowa will have the ball on their 20-yard line, first down, 10 yards to go, and they have Jim Hilgenberg at center, Mike Mayer and Doug Ben Scooter at the guards, Barry Tomasetti and Sam Pack in the single wing. Morton in motion to the right, given to Lazar. Packs in behind left guard and left tackle, gets short yardage out to the 23-yard line. Gary Doolin and Aaron Brown make the tackle. We have uh, Dave Purdy with us down on the sideline while we have a second. Dave, what did you find out in the locker room at halftime? Well, Bob, the main thing was uh, Coach Hill was very happy with the defense. Uh, they only had three plays where they gained over 10 yards. He would like to see a little more pressure on the passer. At the uh, 22, let's make it second down and eight yards to go for Iowa now. McLaughlin in the quarterback spot. As Morton in motion, gives it to Morton. Morton running around the right side. Shake Stansler is hit at the 24 and pushed backwards. And they spot the ball at the 24-yard line. Dave Atkins was the man who finished it off as Dantzler slowed him down. And Dave, any injuries uh, worth mentioning at all? The only injury that I have, Bob, is that Terry Bach, one of the specialty... Cranny. It is third down and six at the 24-yard line, and here's Crook in motion to the left as McLaughlin takes the ball, fakes to Lazar. No, he gives it to Lazar to the 25, and taken at the 27-yard line. Atkins and Brown on the tackle, so they'll have to kick the ball as we pause 10 seconds for station identification. John Frank, Bill Patters, Dave Park, Bob Cox. Seven Holesclaw stands at his 12 to kick it. Griffin standing back at his 40. And here's the boot. Wobbly end over end. Hits at the 45-yard line of Iowa. Rolls down to the 40 and inside to the 38-yard line of Ohio State. It is 13 to nothing, Ohio State. Action continues in 30. At the 38-yard line, Ron Springs goes over left tackle and gets three to the 41. Shanty Burks, the strong safety, makes the tackle, and it'll be second down and seven. That was a 35-yard punt by Holdsclaw a moment ago. Now the Buckeyes with it again. And it is Springs, or rather Ricky Johnson, who gets the call this time. He went in for Springs, and he is knocked down at the line of scrimmage, maybe behind it. Steve Vasquez, a 235-pound junior from Lodi, New Jersey, really leveled him at the 40. It is going to be third down and eight. Now Jones and Harrell, and they have Logan in there in the tailback spot. Gerald going back to throw, and he fires and hits. Over at the 45-yard line, and the catcher is Greg Stora, who falls down immediately in Iowa territory. It's a 15-yard pickup, and the first down. Time and time again, we've seen uh, Rod use that pattern where they flood the right side, and uh, he'll roll to the right side, and then just come back to that tight end that's curling into the middle in this case. Uh, that's... Uh, at the 45-yard line of Iowa, first down, 10 yards to go for Ohio State. Gerald back to throw, fires on the left side. Jimmy Harrell's got it and is hit immediately at the 36-yard line. Jim Harrell and Cedric Shaw makes the tackle at the 36, so there's a gain of nine. Second down and a yard to go for Ohio State. Wagner, Hardy, Hufford, and Vasquez up front. Rusk, Moore, and Weiss are the backers. Shaw, Burks, Becker, Bob Cummings of Youngstown, Ohio. Now Gerald handing off, and it is over the left side. It is Peyton, and he is driving. There's a fumble, and it looks like the Hawkeyes recovered it. The big pileup down there, and recovering the ball, Cedric Shaw. He got the ball, and Ohio State player is hurt. Back at the 30-yard line. So we'll see uh, what that's about in a moment. It looks like Peyton, the man who had the football. And uh, time Iowa has it at that 21 first and 10. And on a reverse, the handoff goes to Rod Morton. And Morton goes from the 21 out to the 24-yard line. Kelton Dantzler and Dave Atkins make the tackle. And it will be, will be second down and seven. The Buckeyes defensively. Ross, Cato, Doolin, and 13-0 Ohio State. Third quarter action. And McLaughlin, the quarterback, has Cook in motion to the left. He fakes to Morton, throws a pass. It is caught at the 34-yard line on the right side and hit immediately is Mike Brady and making the tackle, Kelvin Dantzler and Lenny Mills, and he took it up just over the 35-yard line. First down, 10 for Iowa. Some of the uh, Iowa with a 35 at the 36, first and 10. Cook gets it on the reverse over the left side, and he is going to be hit then, spilled for a loss back at the 35-yard line. Mike Guest 
and Tom Cousinaw making the tackle. Penalty marker is down. A flag on the play away from the area of the football. So we'll see what that's all about. They're uh, checking it over up around the 45-yard line. Like a clip. Ken, we have Dave Purdy down there to get a uh, report on uh, Joel Payton. Uh, what's the story on him, Dave? Bob, Joel Payton just got a helmet on the right side, just above his right, on the pelvis side, uh, right around the right side. And it's a minor bruise, but it's sore enough where he may not go back in. Okay, Dave Purdy, thank you. From the spot of the clip. Now McLaughlin, the quarterback, sends Cook in motion out to the left. He pays back to throw. McLaughlin looks. He's being rushed by Ross. He shakes him. He runs right. He's up to the 15, up to the 20. And Gary Doolin's got him as he goes to the 24-yard line. Gary Doolin on the tackle at the 24, so that will make it second and 21. Doolin, who is looking very good in there for the Buckeyes. Sophomore 6'4", 254, out of Madisonville, Kentucky. Woody Hayes has been four-yard line. Iowa with the ball. Cook in motion. Cook gets it. Over left tackle. Up to the 27 on a gain of three. And that's all he's able to get is Aaron Brown and Paul Ross. Cut him down at that spot. Third down coming up. And that will make it 18 to go for the first down. Nine minutes. Again the shift. Brady comes out as a split end wide on the left side. McLaughlin going back, and he hands it off on a draw and hit hard and spilled as Lazar. His Aaron Brown was all over him. He no sooner got the ball than Brown just spun him down. And that is back at the 23-yard line, and that makes it fourth down and 22 to go. Holtzclaw kicking the ball. His longest has been 59 today. It hits at the 50, is rolling into Buckeye territory, and will be down at about the 37. 13-0 Ohio State. Action will continue in 30 seconds. But today. Good year tires and good year service for more good years in your car. Runs it over into Iowa territory and is finally bounced out of bounds. Let's see where they put it. The ball is being uh, placed in the vicinity of the 40-yard line. Let's see exactly. It looks like the 41-yard line on a fine run by Logan of 22 yards after that 39-yard punt. So the Buckeyes from their 37 now are at the Iowa 41. First and 10. Key blocked by Jimmy Harrell in that last play, Ken. Yes, sir. And now up the middle, uh, he looked like he was giving it to Campbell. There was a fumble, however. And there's a big pileup down there around the line of scrimmage. I think that Rod Gerald managed to hold on to the ball and did. That was a loss back to the 42-yard line as he was trying to get it off to Campbell. And uh, they had a problem with the exchange. It'll be second down, 11 at the 42. Gerald ready. He hasn't done much in the option today, which uh, can spare him some. Handing it off, he gives it to Campbell. He bucks over the right tackle and goes to the 35-yard line for a gain of seven yards on the play. And it had been second and 11, so it'll be third down and four. Stopped by Dean Moore. Dean Moore was the man who made the tackle. He's from... Greg Stora is the other one. Check it, that's Jimmy Moore. Gerald handing off Campbell over left tackle into the 30-yard line, onto the 29. Looks like enough. First down, Campbell a punishing runner, taking the ball. Tom Rush, the middle linebacker. Got him, Matt, just inside the 30. On the uh, play before this, uh, uh, Ken, Rod Gerald had audibleized on that play when he saw something in the defense, and Dave Purdy's by the microphone. Uh, it's at the 30. It is first down, 10 yards to go for Ohio State. Gerald is going back, looking. He's right hard. Shakes the tackle, but it's hit by another one. All the way back at the 45-yard line. They lost 15, and it was Joe Willis who finished it off. Dean Moore started it. Well, that obviously wasn't an audible. Uh, go ahead, Dave. Okay, Bob. The way that has been is before each game, there are certain defenses where we have to audible if we have a certain play on. And he does then have the freedom to call that audible if that defense arises. But he does not have the freedom that, uh, say, Rex Kern has. Well, I don't really know, but I know that uh, in that case there, that, I'm sure that was uh, pre-described beforehand today. Okay, Dave Birdie, thank you. And they put it down. It is second and 24. Gerald drops straight back. Drops one over the middle. It is caught by Logan at the 40. And Jeff goes to the 37-yard line. 
and is hit by Tom Rusk. Somebody came over the top of him and hit him uh, after Rusk had, but Rusk uh, did the bulk of the work. At the 37, as Jeff was looking for running room, and that'll make it third and 17 for the Buckeyes at the 37-yard line of here we are, third and 17. Gerald handing off and running over the right side is Campbell. He is inside the 30, the 25, the 20-yard line. And uh, is finally going to be taken at the 19-yard line. And that will be a first down. They needed 17 yards, and Campbell got 18. To the 19-yard line, first down and 10. Dave Becker and Shanty Burks, the safety men, making the tackle for North at the 19-yard line. Gerald pitching and running with the ball as Ron springs over the right side. Uh, ball broke loose. He was thrown for loss, and he looks like he's hurt, but the whistle had blown the play dead. Fans were roaring about it here for a moment, but Springs is hit back at the 23-yard line, and Ron, uh, is, Ron is shaken up a little bit. Eight of 11 for 89 yards. Second down, 14 at the 23-yard line of Iowa. Gerald fakes, keeps, goes over the left side. He's inside the 10-yard line and on to the five and swivel hips his way in to the three. Brilliant running by Gerald. He faked up the middle, took the ball, found the big hole over the left side, swung outside, and took it all the way into the three-yard line on a run of second quarter, 45-yard touchdown run for Rod Gerald. So they go to the robust tee, and this time it is Campbell, the man in the middle. The ball is given to Paul Campbell. He goes over right guard and gets a yard into the two-yard line. It is second down and goal. Earlier in this game, a great goal line stand by Iowa. Gerald has gained 79 yards in nine carries. The clock has started. Rod Gerald ready. And he's keeping it and rolling around the right side. And he's over for the touchdown. Rod Gerald takes the ball, fakes it into the line, sweeps around the right end and scores, and it is 19-0. Ohio State is out in front on a drive that started back on their own 37. And they just kept punching away. Now Yonikieski tries the point after touchdown. Harold puts it down, he boots it up, and the kick is good. Ohio State leads 20 nothing, and action will continue in 30 seconds. If your car steering is... Uh, Arkansas, or Texas has beaten Arkansas 13 to 9, and not the other way around as we gave it. So, Texas over Arkansas 13 to 9. Jess Cook fumbles the kickoff at the 3, picks it up, runs to the 5, to the 10, angling left. Is hit at the 13-yard line, and go, go, down he goes at that spot with Jim Laughlin and Tom Blinko making the tackle for the Buckeyes. So it goes to Iowa at the 13, first down and 10. And Iowa has really had trouble moving the football here in this third quarter. They've only had the ball for uh, State is out in front. Again, the double wing formation. Tom McLaughlin, the quarterback. In behind Hilgenberg, he has Morton in motion. He fakes to two men and fires up the middle and hits at the 30-yard line. And running it out to the 34 is Brad Reed. The split end goes to the 34-yard line from the 13, a 32-yard pickup, first down. That was a good pattern. He was certainly well open on that. Uh, with a lot of motion in the backfield to freeze the linebackers, he just went down about 10 yards, 12 yards. And Cousinaw were there on the tackle. At the 35, first down 10. Again, McLaughlin back to throw. He's decked. Back at the 29-yard line by Kelton Dantzler, who is cat quick. Takes him back at the 29-yard line. Second down at 15. That's one of the pluses you have when you have uh, an end that's the size of Kelton Dantzler. He's 6'2", he's 208. He has three interceptions on the year. So at the 29-yard line of Iowa, they have second down and 15. They have Jesse Cook in motion coming out to the left. McLaughlin going back to throw it. And he fires downfield, and it is intercepted. No, they say it is not. It was banded in the air by Atkins, and it was grabbed by Lenny Mills. But they claim, no, it was not intercepted. It was intended for Jesse Cook and or Brad Reed, who are both in the flow down on that side of the field. It looked from up here like uh, Lenny might have made the interception, but Laughlin, McLaughlin is uh, 4 of 11 for 54 yards. And it is Cook in motion again to the left. McLaughlin going back to throw. 
going down deep. And it is incomplete. The closest man to the football, Lenny Mills of the Buckeyes, the intended receiver, Mike Brady of Iowa. It'll be fourth down, 15 yards to go at the 29-yard line of Iowa. And again, they will call on Dave Holsclaw, who has kicked the ball today. Standing back, Ray at his 40, and Guess up at the 50. Here's a high kick. Griffin looking into the sun, and he decides to let it roll wisely. And it goes to the 38-yard line of the Buckeyes. It is 20-0 Ohio State. Action continues. In More good keys in your car. On the quarterback draw play, Rod Gerald keeps the ball and goes from his 38 to the 43-yard line. At least I think it was a quarterback draw play. And maybe it wasn't. It could have been a broken play. Molini and Rusk making the tackle. And so it's up to the 43. It'll be second down and five. That was a 34. At the 43, second down five. Gerald handing off and going straight up the middle is Jeff Logan, and he is stopped for a loss on the play at the 40. Two-yard line of Ohio State. It'll be third down and six. On the coaches' show, after the game today, we'll have Bill Miles, coaches the offensive tackles and the tight ends, and Gary Tranquil. Story goes out, Beretta comes in, and Greg Stora goes to the sideline. Third down, six yards to go. Logan and Johnson in the backfield, and there's going to be a loss on this play as Gerald had the ball and was spilled back at the 39-yard line on a big Iowa rush. Dean Moore, the left linebacker and captain, led it. So at the 39, there is a loss of three, and it is fourth down and nine. And now Dave McKee's had a rather quiet afternoon here in Iowa City. He's got the wind at his back. Doug Porter is in the snap for him. And here he is stepping up on the ball, and he lines a long kick downfield. It is taken at the 14-yard line, and it is Becker running back to the 15, the 20, and it crosses up to the 22-yard line where Chris Wood makes the tackle. And that is the end of the third quarter. The Ohio State Buckeyes lead 20 to nothing. This is the Ohio State Football Network. This quarter has been brought to you by your Goodyear stores in Columbus and Central Ohio. A 48-yard kick by Dave McKee. And now we're into the fourth quarter. Iowa at their 22, first and 10, going from left to right as we look at the field. And McLaughlin takes the pass, keeps the ball, runs it out of bounds up at the 31-yard line. And Gary Doolin was the man who shoved him out. And as they bring the ball to the inbounds marker and spot it to... And Tom McLaughlin, the quarterback, gives it off. And running with it is John Lazar, the fullback. And he goes from the 30 to the 34-yard line. And Mark Sullivan makes the tackle. That's enough for a first down for Iowa. 20 to nothing is the score. Ohio State is out in front. And they have first and 10 at the 34. Again, the double wing. They've used it all day. Morton is in motion to the right. He takes to Morton. Goes back to throw. Goes way downfield. And it is incomplete. Down around the Ohio State 20-yard line. He threw that ball a mile. Brad Reed was the intended receiver. He's a speedster from Marion, Iowa. And Lenny Mills was back on the coverage. As he really put the ball way up in the air. Long tackles. Brady and Swift to the ends. Second down, 10. At the 34-yard line, McLaughlin fakes. Goes back to throw. Heavy rush. Thrown for a loss. Paul Ross was right there, and he had some company. He had two or three fellows behind him, but Ross was the first man through. Dantzler was there, and so was Doolin. And uh, it is a loss all the way back to the 23-yard line. So that is a Iowa ready. McLaughlin takes, goes back, and fires another long pass downfield. And it is intercepted at the 38-yard line of Ohio State by Tom Roach. So Tom Roach intercepts again for the Buckeyes as that defensive secondary continues to be something. Brad Reed, the intended receiver, but he was not even close to the ball. There was nobody from uh, Iowa really close to it. As McLaughlin threw it into a crowd of 38-yard line of Ohio State, the Buckeyes have first down and 10. Rod Gerald fakes, rolls left, keeps it to the 40, laterals out. And it is taken by Ricky Johnson up to the 45, but I think he's going to call it a forward pass. And he was beyond the line of scrimmage. It looked to me like he was a little bit 
in front of the uh, area where he should have gotten it. There's the call on that, Ken. You're right. So they will bring it back, and while they're doing it, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. Beyond the line of scrimmage, sometimes are hard to gauge, about a yard beyond it, and he threw the ball a little forward. And now Rod fakes, keeps, and flips out, and it is fumbled, and it looks like Iowa's ball. Big roar from the crowd. And let's see who's going to be underneath. It's Shanty Burks, the strong safety, recovering the ball. Ricky Johnson fumbled it. After Gerald had faked to Logan, moving right, he flips out to Johnson, a fumble. The ball goes over to Iowa. Just a couple of minutes in. McLaughlin back to throw. He guns it down on the right side. Hits at the 31-yard line. The receiver takes it to the 27. Jesse Cook is knocked out of bounds by Mike Guest and Joe Allegro. At the 27-yard line of Ohio State, it'll be first down and 10 yards to go on a 15-yard gain. Well, it looks like the Hawkeyes have a little bit of mold going for them here. Well, uh, certainly this crowd can keep them alive at the 27, first down 10. McLaughlin on an inside reverse, and Jesse Cook got hammered to the ground by Byron Cato. He got the ball, and then he got Cato, and he got all of him. So that is uh, a loss, actually, of a yard back to the 28. And it is second down and 11. Morton is in motion to the right. Morton gets the pitch out. He sweeps around the right end and is going to be hit at the 26-yard line and sent out of bounds by Dave Atkins. So that will make it third and nine. We just received word from uh, Jimmy Jones, associate director of athletics. The Buckeyes will arrive in Columbus. Third down nine at the Ohio State 26-yard line. Frazier is in motion. McLaughlin back to throw. Guns it on the left side and hits. Uh, the receiver is Mike Brady, hit immediately and downed by Mike Guess at the 13-yard line. The fans are booing. Uh, for one thing, they thought he had a first down on it. And As I said the 13, Bob, excuse me, it was the 19-yard line and the original line of scrimmage. They got a full house backfield. McLaughlin optioning it off on the right side and thrown for a loss on the play is Ernie Sheeler, who just went into the ball game. He was the leading ground gainer here a year ago, and the man who made the tackle, guess who? Yes, sir, Mike Guess. At the 23-yard line. So it goes over to Ohio State, and it is first down and 10 at their own 23. Jimmy Harrell going out wide right. Logan and Johnson behind Gerald, the quarterback. And here comes Ricky Johnson over right tackle, still running, goes to his left of the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, down the sideline and knocked out of bounds at the 43-yard line of Iowa. Johnson looked like he was going to be had at the line of scrimmage. Suddenly came bursting up on the left side after going over the right side and runs 34 yards over to the 43-yard line of Iowa. It certainly was good to see him run like that, Ken, because his knee has been somewhat of a question mark since he got that speed that he does have. Roger Steck was the man who finally took him down. Now at the 43, Rod Gerald has it. He keeps the ball. He is going to run it into the 34-yard line, and that appeared to be a broken play. I think he wanted to hand that ball off and couldn't find who he was looking for, so instead he runs it nine yards into the 34. So here we are at the 34-yard line, second and one. And running with it is Campbell from the robust tee. Bangs into the 30 on a pickup of four. Paul Campbell has a first down. John Harty making the tackle for Iowa. So the Buckeyes are on the move here now. And Ricky Johnson is running in and going to the sideline. Paul Campbell. Gerald Reddy gets the ball. Hands it off. It is Ricky Johnson from the 30 to the 29. A pickup of one. And John Harty from Sioux City, Iowa makes the stop. It'll be second down and nine to go at the 29-yard line. Well, we have 10 minutes to go in the game. Full coaches will be with us on the uh, on the coaches show right after the game. So be with us for that. Campbell and uh, Ricardo Volley in the backfield now. And Gerald pitches it out. And here's Volley around the right end into the 25-yard line. And his knee touches as he gets into about the 21, it looks like. 
The tackler was Brian Scratus, who is in there now as a linebacker. And that advance is to the 21. The robust T. And it is Gerald over the left side. He pitches out to Jimmy Harrell, and Harrell takes it into the 19-yard line. Check it. I had that as a first down, and I made a mistake. It was third down and one, and Harold took it into the 19-yard line, and he got the first down. Rod Gerald ready. Haven't seen much of that 4-3 today. Here's Paul Campbell over left tackle, and he carves his way forward inside the 15 onto the 13-yard line. Rusk and Burks make the tackle at the 13, and that will make it second down and four to go for the first. Well, as Coach Hayes has said a number of times, the team will show you in any given situation. Second down and four at the 13-yard line. And running with the ball again is Paul Campbell over the right tackle. He goes right into the four. He uh, made a fine effort that time. He got an opening and shot through to the four for the first down. And the tackler was Dave Becker, the free safety. And it is first down, goal to go for Ohio State at the four-yard line of Iowa. Buckeyes lead. Good one, huh? And we'll get you right. And uh, Texas over Arkansas, 13 to 9. First down, goal at the four. Back goes Gerald. He looks and lobs a pass. It is caught by Jimmy Harrell, and he goes to the one. Three-yard pickup, second down and goal. And Rod Sears from Creston, Iowa, playing at the cornerback on the left side. Took him down. Second down and goal at the one. I don't rather coach him. First half of this football game. Now Gerald handing off and burrowing in for a touchdown. Paul Campbell going in behind uh, Mark Lang and Ernie Andrea for the score to make it 26 to nothing. So the Buckeyes started this drive back in their own 23. They go 77 yards for a touchdown. 11 plays. They have been using time. Yona Kieski trying for the point after touchdown. And it is good. He hasn't missed this year. It is 27 to nothing, Ohio State. Action continues after this from Motors Insurance Company. Cook, Reed, and Frazier are back deep for Iowa. And here it is. And that's a good, strong kick into that wind. And Jess Cook will not run it out. It will come out to the 20-yard line. First down and 10 to go for Iowa. Jesse Cook. Down to the kickoff in the end zone. So now we see McLaughlin going back into action with his uh, running mates. He's used to pretty much Jim Hilgenberg over the ball at center. Morton in motion to the right. McLaughlin running right on the option. Keeps the ball. Slices back to the 25 and across it up to the 28-yard line. Making the tackle Gary Doolin and Ray Griffin. So it will be second and two. This quarter being brought to you by Motorist Insurance Companies. Remember, life, auto, home, or business, Motorist Insurance serves you. Second down, two yards to go. McLaughlin, 6 of 15 for 86 yards. Throwing the ball today. He hands it off to Morton, who may have gotten the first down, coming over right tackle and a little bit uh, to the outside toward the end. Doolin and Atkins, again there on the stop for Ohio State, did not get... Ah, uh, yeah, they did indicating now that they did make the first down at the 30-yard line. One official had it spotted back at the 29. They moved it up to the 30, and it is first down. The only team in the Big Ten using the double wing. And McLaughlin pitching out. Cook fumbles the ball, picks it up, is hit behind the line of scrimmage, still keeps his feet, and now is pushed backward hard by Mark Sullivan and Tom Cousinow at the 23-yard line. So that will make it second down and 17 to go for Iowa. Flag down. McLaughlin rolling back to throw. Sends it out on the right side and hits Brady. Brady gets it out to the 39-yard line. Good catch. Down and out pattern. Joe Allegro takes him down. And at the 39-yard line, it will be third down and a yard. Kenneth, just looking ahead next week, uh, we're at Northwestern. Uh, and it's hard to believe this season's uh, a little more than half of a yard at the 39-yard line. McLaughlin, the quarterback, has Morton in motion. He keeps the ball, McLaughlin does, and gets the first down. He just uh, wanted to get the first down there, and he went over his left guard. Paul Ross tackled him at the 42, and 
so it goes uh, first and ten for the Hawkeyes at their own 42-yard line. And the clock starts moving again as part of this crowd of 60,070 starts to... Laughlin, the quarterback, going back to throw. Ross chasing him. He's running left. He's going to get some yards to the 45, to the 50, and hit and tackled at the 48-yard line of the Buckeyes by Joe Allegro. Looks like he might have picked up a first down on that. Sure is in, and he is out wide to the right. McLaughlin going back to throw it. Fires a long pass downfield for Frazier, and he makes a great catch and is tackled at the 14-yard line. Jimmy Frazier tackled by Mike Guess. Oh, what a catch that was. A beauty. Certainly deserves all the credit in the world for that completion. That's about the fourth time this afternoon they've tried one of those two, one of those real long, long passes. And with the wind at his back, uh, he was all for Iowa. They have Frazier in motion. Back goes the quarterback, and he's going to be thrown for a loss by Cousinaw. Tom Cousinaw in there to make the stop on him, and he came blitzing through to take down the quarterback back at the 21-yard line. And it'll be second down and 17. Second down, 17. Back goes the quarterback, McLaughlin, looking, firing on the left side, and it is incomplete. Flag down at the three. And I think they're calling it either on Frazier or on Guess. It looks to me like they're calling it on Frazier, who bumped into Mike Guess and knocked him down. So it's offensive interference. 14-yard line was the original line of scrimmage. It's back at the 36. McLaughlin looking, firing downfield. And this one is intercepted at the 14-yard line. And running it back is Tom Roach to the 20. And there he is down. It was deflected and then intercepted. It is 27-0 Buckeyes, and action will continue after this from Motorist Insurance Company. An auto insurance company? We do. And we say it's a lot more, too. Motorist insures boats and campers, trucks and vans, pickups and pop-tops. Sure, we insure... Buckeyes at their 21-yard line. Ricardo Volley gets the call, runs it over the right side, brings it to the 29-yard line. And uh, there he is taken down as Greg Castagnola handed the ball off to him. Castagnola in the lineup now at the quarterback position for the first time. Second down. Castagnola handing off. Running with the ball, Ricardo Bali again. Up to the 32, maybe the 33-yard line. That's the first down. In there on the tackle, we have Brian Stratus and Gene Holtorf. It will be now first Castagnola working in the quarterback position. And it is a handoff to Campbell. And Paul Campbell brings it from the 33 up to the 35 on a gain of two yards. Steve Wagner, the defensive left end from Chicago, Illinois, makes the tackle. It'll be second and eight. This quarter being brought to you by Motorist Insurance Company. Remember, Charlie Hunter in there, and he's out wide on the right. And Castagnola is keeping the ball and spins forward to the 39, but he fumbled it. Fumble, and it looks like Iowa. The ball goes over to the Hawkeyes of Iowa at the 39-yard line of Ohio State. It is 27-0 Buckeyes. Action continues after this from Motorist Insurance Company. Motorist Insurance. You know us. McLaughlin throws a pass to Frazier. And Frazier makes the catch and is into the 25-yard line. Guess and Ross make the tackle for Ohio State. It is first down for the Hawkeyes at the 25-yard line, a 13-yard gain on the play. 29 seconds, and the clock is moving. And McLaughlin again back to throw. Fires on the left side, and he hits down there, and Mike Guess makes the tackle on Mike Brady. Guess made the tackle on the previous play on Frazier on the other side. And the ball is at the 16-yard line. So that makes it second down and a yard. Second and one. And once more, Brad Reed runs in with a play. And we're down to two minutes left. 27 formation. They did not use it on the last play. Here comes McLaughlin to throw. Hires into the end zone for Frazier. And it is tipped out of his hands at the very last instant by Mike Guest. Oh, what a play by Guest to prevent the touchdown. Although... Frazier might have caught the ball and stepped out. He might have been over. Of course, at this stage of the game, a minute and 44 to go, the Buckeye defense would certainly like to have their third shutout right here. 
Third down, a yard to go now as McLaughlin gets ready. Sends uh, a man in motion. He rolls right, and it is Morton running around the right end. And he is going to be sent out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Mike Guess and Dave Atkins making the tackle on the play for Ohio State. And that's going to mean first down for Iowa at the 13. McLaughlin goes back to throw. Ross charging. He throws a short pass that is incomplete, and he was throwing it to nobody special. Just not uh, to Paul Ross, who was just pouring in on him that time, and so was Dantzler. Aaron Brown also in on the play, and so it is second. Takes to Cook, goes back to throw, hard rush, passes to Doolin into the 10, and a forward to the 7. It goes to, uh, I'm sorry, Lazar was the man who had the ball. Allegro and Doolin were the men who made the tackle. So it goes to the fullback, John Lazar, and the 210-pounder. Okay, here we go. They need three. And running with the ball and taking it into about the two-yard line is John Lazar, the fullback. Making the tackle, Atkins and the cousin are the linebackers. So at the two, it is first down, goal to goal. Ready. It is first down, and diving in for the touchdown is John Lazar. It is 27 to 6. Ohio State is out in front, and John Lazar, the fullback, has just run it over for a touchdown. So the Hawkeyes have something to cheer about. Yeah, now they're going to try to get two points. They have Frazier in motion. Back goes McLaughlin. He looks to throw and guns it out of the hand of Brad Reed. He drilled it, but he couldn't catch it. It is 27 to nothing, Ohio State, and action will continue after this. From Gary Tranquil uh, coaches the defensive backfield. They gave him a lot of short stuff today, but nothing really big. So I don't think uh, an onside kick. An onside kick, but it didn't go uh, 10 yards. It is fallen on by a Buckeye down there at the 48-yard line. Tom Morris with the man who uh, landed on the ball. So it will go. So here we are, a minute and 10 seconds left, and Castagnola, the quarterback, handing off, and it's Ricardo Volley taking the ball from the 48 to the 46-yard line for a gain of two. Uh, Dave Purdy, we might not have a chance to get to you again in the game. You're down there in the sideline. Uh, what's the uh, injury report for us? Okay, the only injury... Thank you. Mike Strahin is in there, and he pitches it off, and it's volley again. And Ricardo takes it to the 43-yard uh, line on a gain of three yards. And that will make it third down and five yards to go for Ohio State at the full push. Mike Strahin bobbles the ball on the handoff and falls on it right there at the line of scrimmage. It looks like he has it, and that's all there is. It's all over at Iowa City, and the Buckeyes of Ohio State have come through with another victory here today, an impressive one, as they come up with a win over Iowa 27-6. to We'll return with a final summary after this from Motorist Insurance Company. Since we began playing this song on the radio, thousands of people have come in and said to us, Hello, I know you, and we think that's great. Who are we? Why, Motorist Insurance, of course. Motorist Insurance, you know what? With all the insurance companies around, it can get confusing. Some have little train stations, blankets, rocks, even six-point stags. Motorist Mutual doesn't have any of these, but our agents do have a friendly way of helping you find the best auto, home, business, and life insurance. We really do want you to know us, because to know us is to love us. Vicki Ziegler got her degree in agricultural economics. She had five job offers waiting. The knowledge I gained at Ohio State is what I look at as what I would gain if I was out on the farm and farming for 20 years, where I spent four years in college and learned it. 
Vicki now has a marketing job with a farm equipment manufacturer. I'm very pleased with what I, my education from Ohio State and agriculture economics. It was well worth it. Vicki Ziegler from Ohio State University, a special place. Well, we're back here in Iowa City, and the Buckeyes of Ohio State have beaten Iowa by a score of 27 to 6 here now as the throng is uh, filing out. It's been a beautiful afternoon here, Bob, and uh, an enjoyable football game, and... Uh, well, the Hawkeyes for a while had something to cheer about. They had that great goal line stand uh, during the first half. But offensively, uh, they just couldn't really handle it uh, as far as the Buckeye defense was concerned until the very late stages when they managed to push over that one score of the day. You're right, Ken. You're right, Ken. They did not get shut out. And uh, as George Hill uh, said he was going to do in the second half, he's going to put a little more penetration, uh, a little more uh, uh, effort on getting at that passer and disrupting their game, which they seemed to, which uh, Buckeye defense seemed to do, except say for that last minute and 11 seconds when they did get on the board. Uh, it was uh, simply Buckeyes uh, all the way. And we had a fairly good turnout of Ohio State fans out here. A lot of scarlet jackets down there in the uh, down in the stands. So the University of Iowa band just gave them a little salute. So it's been a pretty good homecoming day here.